I'll be back, D, to see you. What's going on Worldwide Massive? This is Crazy D on the set of the Black Ice Chronicles. Now, you know, ever endeavoring to bring you great entertainment, you know that the Black Ice Chronicles, the original story about Jill and Jake, well, there's a backstory to the Jill character and how she uh, gets into the predicament of finally getting with Jake and it starts right here. Now, Jill has an aunt. Her name is Jessie. And we're trying out an actress for the role of Jessie. Tell me who you are. I'm Leandra Jackson. And I'll be playing the character of Jessie. All right, all right. So what happens is Jill is... You already know this. Jill is Big Pippin's cousin. But they have an aunt that's a firecracker. Now, you'll find out what happens later with the aunt in later episodes, you know, after we get to filming this backstory. But here is where the Aunt Jesse character is introduced when Jill first originally comes into Crazy D's to uh, model. She wants to sign up to be a model to be on some of my CD and DVD covers. Dang, Crazy D. You photograph a lot of models. Yes, I have. It's one thing about me. What I shoot does come out. I believe in the people who work with me being seen, heard, appreciated, and being seen on CD and DVD covers. Do the models get paid? I'm just asking with the type of work that you do. I'm not judging or nothing, but... Pay? Pay someone who doesn't know how to do something? <laughs> That's like me paying someone who has never laid a driveway and I wonder why I was a fool and his money soon part. <laughs> no, it's no pay. But all the models have an opportunity to sell the CDs and DVDs they appear on. That way they can sell a product and they don't need to sell themselves. Like music is like to me, it is like the backstory to our lives. It's like it's playing in our subconscious and in our conscious. This is uh, music is all around us. Like music drove the um, civil rights movement, mm -hmm. drove the Black Power movement, drove the hip hop movement. And everybody was saying hip hop is nothing, and they kept on pushing and pushing to now where hip hop is. Where is that? You know, so those are the songs. So to see music cheapened mm -hmm. to the way it is now, when really it's our life blood. If we didn't have music, people wouldn't move. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't James Brown, Black and I'm Proud, people, if James Brown sold Brother Number One, if he wasn't putting it down, then uh, the Isaac Brothers would have came up with Fight the Power, mm -hmm. you know, pushing the movement. Everything builds upon itself. So, you know, so music is very important. Those are the things that come to mind that you remember with music. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so yeah. next question. Well, no, it's really, actually, that's really kind of it. It's, we're kind of 
just wanted to get a feel for someone in the community and in our neighborhood who really has some authority when it comes to music and definitely has a knowledge of music. I kind of wanted to get your own personal take on music in summertime, your own anecdotes about that period. And, and I would definitely, in addition to your own personal experiences, you had like, not necessarily a top ten list, but if you had some suggestions um, that come to mind for when you think of summertime fun, whether it's, you know, barbecuing or picnics, family reunions, fun at the beach, you know, whatever it may be, fun in the backyard, what do you kind of envision playing in the background? What do you suggest people should have uh, playing in the background while they're having the family over? You got to limit it at 10. Does that have to be a top 10? What automatically comes to, comes to mind? Oh, okay. We definitely have to have, this is going to come from our left field. I don't know, people Good. who field know me. Good. It will be like, I don't believe, but we need to have either Sam Cooke's version or um, <clears throat> Luther Vandross' version. Okay, okay. Right, right. Okay. Uh, that one most definitely. Uh, I would say that's probably number ten. Okay. Um, number nine. Oh, I'm not, I'm gonna just say the numbers, but they can be okay. any order. Yeah. But number nine, we definitely have to have cute. Okay. That's me playing the background. Zap's um, Zap has so many, in, in it, but I think dance floor. Okay. You got to have that in there. Uh, that brings um, back memories. Um, seven. Um, one over two. Yeah. Okay. You know, um, Rebel without a pause. Okay. Got Sucker MCs, Run mm -hmm. DMC, that's definitely something okay. that you can play in the background. Okay. Um, Beatbox by Art and Noise. Okay. Uh, Beatbox Boys, uh, which is Einstein that has to be playing. Those, okay. those are songs, those remind me of Skate. Okay. Skate period, Southgate Skates. Mm -hmm. um, then you have to have uh, Summer Breeze mm -hmm. by the Isaac Brothers. Mm -hmm. Miami. To have. I think number one is Summer Madness by Who in the Game. Okay. You know, the long version. Okay. Eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. So let's say I jumped. So we got five, four, <laughs> yeah, three, I lost your two. Okay. Okay. By the way, you're going to find out. I'm going to stay <laughs> oh, on yeah. it. But number okay. one is Summer Madness. <laughs> okay. Number five is the remake remake of Summer Madness, Summertime okay. by Will Smith. Okay. You got to have that playing in there. Number mm -hmm. four. Um, please, Mr. Groove, mm -hmm. won't you come back home? Mm -hmm. Won't you come? Okay. Mm -hmm. Please, please, won't you come? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. You had to have some Johnny Guitar Watson. Okay. Real motherfucker. Okay. Right, right, right. You had to have that. And then number two, I just had it in my head. Oh. You have to have oh, Johnny Guitar Watson did come from Cleveland, but another Cleveland native uh, sexual harassment. I need a freak. Number two. Um, wow. Boom. You remember that? Okay. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. Lance Oliver. Yeah. And Brown, but yeah, right, right, right. So you got to have sexual. Those are songs that have to be okay. rolling. Those are things like. When that comes on in the car, especially with sounds now, uh, the way that that drops, <laughs> when that bass line, boom, boom, boom. I mean, it's just, just Cruising. cruise, yeah. hitting the wheel, leaning okay. back. Yeah, so, yeah, so that's that's my 10. Okay. Yeah. I actually, I think I'm almost positive it was more than 10. It oh, was well. probably closer to 15. That's all right. It's crazy to now, you know, 
that, you know, honestly speaking, you get that lump sum of money, you're going to have a little fun. It's not like you're going to be all serious. You're going to have a little fun. But you have to, as well, learn how to you know, keep that in perspective. The Black Ice Chronicles, Females DVD. I, I don't think you realize who Females. you talking to. Written, filmed, and directed by Crazy D. Look, Crazy D, I want to work with you. So how long before we start shooting? I don't have all day, but... You don't have all day. Selling now at Warrensville's Compact Disc, a.k.a. Crazy D's Music Palace. Lips. Download movies and music to your USB device at Crazy D's. Hey you. I've been looking for someone like you for a while now. Well daddy, your wait is over. Here I am. Well look at you. You have been waiting for me. And I see it's nice and hard. And I love hard things between my legs, Daddy. 
I've been bad, Daddy. And I need you to punish me, Daddy. Can you do that in the back? Yeah, you naughty girl. Daddy's gonna give me something hard. You'll never be bad again. Scene fades. Scene fades up in the back. Val gets up off of Leonard after doing the do. And Val says... Yeah, Daddy. That'll be 50. 50? <laughs> you never discussed price with me. I thought you were doing this for free. Come on, man. Give me my money so I could go. <laughs> money for what? It wasn't that good. I'll tell you what. Get out of my car so I can go, bitch. Nigga, you gonna give me what you owe me. <clears throat> <clears throat> Negro, you got to go. I would go, but first I'm gonna get what you were gonna give me. Nigga, you must be sick. I wasn't gonna give you shit, and definitely not now. Oh, I'm about to break it in good. Then you'll be on track, hood to hood. Bitch! Bitch, who you calling a bitch, bitch? Stop struggling, or you'll be one damn bitch. Charles, you don't have to do this. You're a nice guy. You don't have to do this. Charles Pimpin, I see said the blind man. Hey man, Timothy was criticized for his leadership. Hey man, there wasn't anything wrong with Peter's I rather Timothy's leadership per se. It wasn't anything wrong with it, other than the fact they thought his age disqualified him. Well. Mm. Amen. And that wasn't the case at all. <coughs> Timothy's teaching was at odds <coughs> with what the folks thought. Mm. That's why they was trying to exclude him. Mm. And anytime you're teaching, and that being the word of God is different than the way folk think. They don't they want to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can be old or young. But if your word is that of God and that word is convicting, people don't like it. Mm -hmm. They don't like that word. And it has nothing to do with who you are. Amen. Timothy was taking flat for being too young to have the kind of responsibilities in life that he had. All right. How should one handle criticisms? Young people, when folk criticize you, how should you handle that? Not so young people. How should you handle criticism? When people are criticizing you for whatever reason, I read this story once. Matter of fact, I just read it very recently about criticism. You can't please everybody. Amen. This man had his donkey and his little boy. And they were riding, or rather, the man was riding the donkey. And the little boy was walking beside. People in the town said, it's not a shame. That grown man ride, riding the donkey and got the little boy walking. They heard it and they decided to change up. So the man put the little boy on the donkey and the man decided to walk. <coughs> there he is walking with his donkey and the little boy riding. Come to another crowd of people. It's not a shame. <laughs> he's got that little boy, that little boy riding the donkey. He's got his dad walking. The man heard that and said, Well, let's change it. <laughs> the man and the boy began to walk. And come to another crowd, he said, Well, it's not a shame. Those folks ain't got no sense. They don't they realize they can ride the donkey. <laughs> <laughs> there they are walking the donkey, walking, and they can be riding. Yeah. <laughs> well, they 
decided to change up again. The little boy and the man decided to carry the number. No, we won't get any criticism now. They decided to carry the donkey. And they finally came to a bridge, and they couldn't get across, so the donkey and the boy and the man fell in the water. Well, the object of the story is that if you try to please everybody, you're going to lose your donkey. <laughs> <laughs> you can't satisfy everybody, so don't you try. You try to please the Lord. You try to please God, you please God, that's all that matters. What's going on the Black Ice Chronicles Massacre? We're out here in the streets of Cleveland, and I'm standing here with one of the mainstays in Cleveland, one of the greatest Cleveland activists, Bashir Jones. We were just having a we were just having a conversation off the screen, so I said I was gonna hit it and put it on the screen. And so we were talking about because if you pan over to the table, they already got the registration cards out for people to register to vote so we can get Barack Obama back in office for his second term in 2012. So now I was asking you, so how's it going with all this propaganda that we see on these DVDs? You know, how's that going? The, big, the biggest issue that we're dealing with, man, don't, it really don't have anything to do with the, with, with that, you know, with the, 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 the Republican propaganda. More so what we're dealing with within, within our people is this sense of powerlessness, man. That, they, that many of us, or too many of us, don't feel like we can make a change, man. You know, we like, man, not only are we saying why vote, but even more importantly, we like, what's the point of it? And, and that's, that's sad, man. And, uh, you know, they don't realize how much power they have. And if we can get you to get out and vote, then we can get you to go and take care of your children. We can get you to get up and go get a job. We can get you, and so forth and so on. So it's not just about getting Barack back in office. We want them to have it. Make sure you go vote for President Obama 2012, Congresswoman Marshall Fudge, and so forth and so on. But more importantly, it's about community empowerment. Getting the community empowered. Getting these young cats out here to feel like they can make a change. They don't feel like they got power. They got power, man. They don't even know it, man. I so, mean, the whole, the whole civil rights movement. Come on, the black power movement. Led by young people. They were led by young people. Young people had an energy. They had a force. Exactly. And when they set their minds to it, they had a dedication exactly. to get it done. They ain't scared. And they're not they scared. scared. They ain't scared. Yeah, that's, that's one thing about it. With all the foolishness that does happen out in the streets, they're not afraid. They're not afraid. So if they can have the energy refocus, exactly. anything is possible. Yeah, I was looking at these young cats out here, man. These young cats made soldiers, man. But they didn't fight in the wrong war. And they've been tricked to fight a different war. They've been tricked by music. They've been tricked by the media to fight this war. You know, I'm from different streets, or, you know what I'm saying? Or that other stupid stuff. The real war is let's fight for freedom. Let's fight for the fact that if you look around our neighborhood, right down Buckeye, Main Street, the majority of businesses on Buckeye is abandoned. Like, that, like that's what we should be fighting for, man. But they got us focused on something else. And, and, and as long as they got us focused on something else, then they can continue to manipulate us behind our backs. Uh, I was just, I had a couple of rappers coming to my store, and they were talking about selling out in music. And I told them that we had to go deeper than what they see on the DVD, because we're looking at competition. And really, competition isn't God's love at all. I mean, we're supposed to be about building something, and in my aspect of it, I went a little bit deeper on them. I told them that hip hop is almost like a devil music. And maybe it always was because it replaced one competition gun violence, gang violence, maiming, killing, and replaced it with b uh, boying, uh, dancing, graffiti art, all that. But then that still breeds envy, jealousy. So 
So speak to that. Do you have a different viewpoint on that? Because I'm throwing mine out there to see what other people have on their viewpoint. Well, I think that music is power, man. And, and, and what makes it power is, is, is its repetition. You know, the key to brainwashing is repetition. So whatever I tell you most often is what you begin to believe. So we have to ask ourselves, when we listen to the radio, when we're listening to uh, the major uh, media networks, the songs that are being played most often, uh, majority of times, have messages that has nothing to do with the empowerment of our community. Now, what they'll say is, well, that's what the people want to hear. But what we know is that they only want to hear it because they've been forced to hear it. They haven't been given an option to hear something else. So, you know, most importantly for me, what I do appreciate from the rappers and, and many of them is that they have a mean work ethic. They work very hard. Even though they work hard, in my opinion, in the wrong direction, they still work hard. So what I do is not focus on them, but I focus on working harder than them. And, um, and, and giving the right message, which is the message that be the change you want to see. And uh, that's, that's my message. The Black Ice Chronicles, Females DVD. I, I don't think you realize who Females. you talking to. Written, filmed, and directed by Crazy D. Look, Crazy D, I want to work with you. So how long before we start shooting? I don't have all day, but... You don't have all day. Selling now at Warrensville's Compact Disc, aka Crazy D's Music Palace. I see you still got the lips. Download movies and music to your USB device at Crazy D's. And, uh, you know, and so I am uh, doing it with the uh, comedy um, and the acting more so first. When I first went out there, I always said I wanted to be a, I had to continue my, my first, I'm a, I'm a comedian first. So, so here, here, here's the breakdown for people who would go out anywhere because you know anywhere it could be any of the major places New York LA Atlanta Florida any of the major markets right when you first went out there because this would be the story for any of those markets I believe when you first went out there you tell you told jokes back in 09 about being in your car right? yeah and, 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 and living in your car and dating the chick and taking it to the uh, Park. Ooh, to the park. We had a great time. So, <laughs> so, great. and so, when you first went out there, how long was it from living in your car to uh, stacking up enough to go on ahead and get your first living dwelling to moving up, possibly changing the car that you drive to moving up into another type of living space? How long did it take before you were out of the car and definitely not what you would consider homeless? Oh, it's, it's funny you said, man, because I'm still in the car now, uh, and I'm having a great time. Uh, what I do uh, every now and then, every few months, I'll buy another car. It'll be like moving. So I'm moving to a, you know, I just had a Saab. I just sold that, and I just moved into a Mazda now. And so that's my home, and I'll sleep in different parks. Uh, if someone, a police officer, for instance, say, hey, what you, you can't sleep here. Oh, sir, I'm just waiting for my wife to come out. Of course, there is no wife. But there is a good nap that I get for about 15, 20 minutes until they come. And I'm going to tell you why I do that. Because uh, the rents are so high in, in L.A. that uh, I've thought about a uh, small crime that I could do, you know, to go to jail for a couple of days just to get me a, a, you know, a cold sandwich or, or whatnot and do my thing. And, and, you know, but, but, but uh, and I'm going to tell you another thing that, that's really disturbing. Richard Pryor said that when he was in jail, uh, he told jokes to keep folks' mind off his booty. You know any yeah, jokes? Yeah. <laughs> that just came to my mind. But the point is this. Right. <laughs> uh, I, I was homeless for six months, man. After, it took me six months to get a, a living uh, apartment. Because before I was homeless, man, I was doing jokes every day. Mm -hmm. Every day. I was going to get like $50. You know, uh, sometimes it'd be twenty. So they really weren't paying. I wasn't used to that because when I was in Cleveland, I was doing jokes and, and they were, I would get paid. That's I was going all over the country getting paid. I was only getting two hundred to sell, but I was getting paid doing that. So when I went to LA, it was a shock for me because I didn't have no job. I was just doing jokes every day. When I was homeless, I said, "Oh, it's getting cold out here at night. Let me get a job." So I, it took me six months to get a job. Then I got my car, started sleeping in that. Then uh, from there, I got an apartment in Hollywood, and uh, I just kept going and I don't think I can ever go back I, and since then I, I couldn't be homeless again and I'll date the elderly I'll date fat women I'll date uh, stalkers midgets I mean uh, mentally retarded women it doesn't matter because that was a time that uh, 
that I don't uh, want to go back to. And, 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 and I'm not saying anything bad about these women, these, these elderly uh, or, or midgets or, or, or uh, mentally retarded. But what I am saying is this, and, and, and I don't care what nobody say. People, they want to criticize me because, yeah, I used to be homeless and I can't. I, I'm, a, I'm a motivator. In addition to a motivator, I am a, uh, I have a healer penis, if you will. And the reason why I say that because this penis heals. I've had sex with a midget that made her feel five feet, two inches tall. And that's still short for some of us regular sized people, but it's a confidence and a morale booster. I have screwed a retard smart, Crazy D. And let me tell you what I mean by that. I had sex with a retard woman so bad until she won a spelling bee. And it was words like the and a and b, but she did good on the test. I mean, I had sex with that retarded woman until she took her helmet off. She thought, I thought she was playing for the Cleveland Browns at first. She had on the Cleveland Browns helmet and some brown drawers. I don't know why they were, but I'll tell you one thing. I had sex with that woman until she wanted a spelling bee. Crazy D, I have a healer penis, if you will. I go to church on Sunday, so I know what the word can do. And I manifest that word in through my penis, out into that retarded woman. And let me tell you one thing, I get her $20 a month, I get her parking pass, I buy her diapers, so it all comes into play. I bought her own diaper last Christmas, so when people say I'm using this one, they don't know what they're talking about. I've had sex with the elderly until she gave me her bingo money. So you see what I'm saying? I know what I'm doing. I am a motivator. I am a healer. You can ask Bernadette. I've had sex with her until she lost 20, 30 pounds. So what I'm saying is, if you know any uh, a fat woman, a retarded woman, an elderly woman, bring them to me. I have a healer penis. That's what I'm going to say about that. A healer. This is a healer. i got to give a testimony of that tomorrow in church. So I want to... Just want to uh, <laughs> give a big thank you for that healer uh, that the healer has given me. Sister Jones, come with me. Not you, Mother Jones. Oh. The point is this. I, I don't think I'm above anybody. And maybe you think you're better than other people. Because I see when I said, hey, I healed the, the mentally retarded. Oh, I, heaven, so I don't do that kind of stuff. No. Keep my regular penis for the regular woman. The smart ones. No, 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 no. I'm an equal opportunity employer. Thanks, Bernadette. What's going on? The Black Ice Chronicles Massive. I'm going to let this man introduce himself and then from there I'm going to ask some questions. What's going on, everybody? It's D Trundle, the artist. I guess that's my tagline now. Uh, I say I'm the artist because I'm so intertwined with everything that's artistic. From the creative side, the visual side, I try to entwine myself into the performance side, but I'm not really a performer, but you know, I dabble with what I can. So that's me, D Trump, the artist, and uh, Crazy D. Crazy D, uh. They, they know me. Oh, they, 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 they know Crazy D, of course. Yeah, they know Crazy D. They know me. They know me. Anyway, look. Now, I created this dude, this guy right here. Uh, we were at the Ohio Homecoming. And we were coming back from the Indians in back. And he said, Chris did, would you like to be part of the 48-hour film fest? And I said, what's the 48-hour film fest? And then he, he told me what it was. He said, people get together and within, they go down and find out what's happening. And then within 48 hours, they come up with a film that shows in the Cedar Lake Theater. I said, yeah, I'm going to come on down. Thank you for inviting me. And then we came down, and 48 hours later, we came out with weight. We came out with weight. So that's pretty much our short film that came up with in 48 hours. Uh, the whole concept behind it is really to say, it kind of illustrates that everybody in there was waiting on something, whether they're trying to wait on something, whether they're waiting on somebody else to do something, or something along that line. So that's pretty much the whole concept to where uh, the one young lady who was the main character, well, Christina, uh, actually was. Well, she wasn't late, but her ex-boyfriend was actually waiting on her to come out and uh, to kind of talk to her, tell her something he wanted to tell her, but just really couldn't. Why we didn't really fully put that into detail because it's 40 hours and you only do so much. Uh, but he's pretty much waiting on her to come out so he can tell her what he needed to tell her, but still couldn't do it. So he's waiting on the right time or moment to do it. Uh, but it almost took away, but he was able to give her something after the fact, uh, before she got away. So what happened after that, after that, after the short film, is something that you want to see. 
Ted Perez the uh, email or something. Let them know that you want to see the rest of what's going on. If you haven't seen the film yet, uh, go to, it may be up here somewhere. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we just go from there. So this year, it's coming up again, 40-hour film festival. Crazy Dave, you want to be a part of the team again? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know. I'm kind of Another sneak is 48 hours. Uh, let's get that done. <laughs> but like I said, I want him to talk about weight because I credit him in inspiring my creative juices because once all those people got together, because sometimes in Cleveland, there's stagnation. And then when you get together with a group of people who are creative, then you bring out things that you may have suppressed for a while. So from there, I said, well, let me go on ahead and put my, my typing skills to the test and put it to full, uh, full capability to come out with the Black Ice Chronicles. And that's where that comes from. So I thank him for invited me in from right. there and some of the actors actually came over to mine and actually did some episodes of the Black Ice Chronicles. So shout out to them and we're rolling. Now, let's talk about the Ohio Homecoming. Ohio Homecoming. That's right. Now last year we had it, you know what I'm saying, they saw the MGK, you know, MGK's video got that much did. play and now he's in the Source magazine and he did pick them up. Oh, yeah. Right yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So, you know what I'm saying? I want to say what's up to MGK. And then, of course, on, MGK. of course, we had the big battle royale that Kid happened Cuddy. with Kid Cudi. So, you don't know what may happen. Everything was still peaceful all at the same time. That's remarkable. Mm -hmm. So, tell them this time where the concert's going to be. Well, last year, to start from that part right quick, last year we had a mall seat. We wanted to do something that was different, having a place that was never had a concert before. I think Obama actually spoke there mm -hmm. a couple years prior too, but it was never a concert in mall seat. And as you know, probably now, mall seat is it's no longer. It's no longer. The medical mall is being built over there now. So mm -hmm. we're trying to figure out what would be the next best place. And the next best place to really make this, this year, 2011's Ohio Homecoming, more epic or epic. It's going to be right behind Brown Stadium, which if you can see a mirror, I can't see a mirror. But right behind Brown Stadium, uh, 432, right on the water. The, the, the stage and everything will be facing the Brown Stadium, but right behind the stage, right on the scenery behind it will be a lake. So you're going to be looking at the performances, you're going to look at the lake, the atmosphere, and they just ran again. But they'll still be out there like they was last year. It rained last year, they stayed there. It may happen again this year if it rains. We're still representing Ohio homecoming. Ohio in general, come out support. It's all about positivity. The Black Ice Chronicles, females DVD. I, I don't think you realize who females. you talking to. Written, filmed, and directed by Crazy D. Look, Crazy D, I want to work with you. So how long before we start shooting? I don't have all day, but... You don't have all day. Selling now at Warrensville's Compact Disc, a.k.a. Crazy D's Music Palace. Download movies and music to your USB device at Crazy D's.